Let me talk to you about Keir Starmer. Matt, because he really is under pressure now. Uh, I mentioned that open letter earlier on from councillors. He's seen the resignation of councillors. Uh, he was in Wales talking uh, with some Muslim uh, members at a mosque there. They came out and said that he'd represented, misrepresented, sorry, the conversations that they'd had and all the rest of it. He's become under fire because he didn't mention uh, this situation in PMQs today. What do you make to all this? So just so... Anyone who doesn't know where I broadly speaking come from, because I think it's important for people to know the context in which I speak, I'm sort of broadly in favour of a Labour government and certainly not a supporter of this Conservative government. And I think that Starmer has made mistakes here. And I predicted this. I reached out. I lost my father nearly three weeks ago. And so I wasn't on social media for three days out of respect. And that was just at the time of these atrocities. But I worried that Israel, in response to the savagery, the medievalism, would bomb Gaza to smithereens. And I worried that Labour wouldn't speak out against that because they are understandably very keen to distance the party from the horror days of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. And so I reached out to, I won't say who, to a, a senior Labour MP and sort of beseeched him to take this point on board. And I don't think Labour did sufficiently listen in those early days. And as a consequence of that, Starmer on another channel, I won't mention it, was being interviewed and he was asked whether Israel has a right to defend itself. And he, of course, said yes. We don't mind healthy competition. It was LBC. It was LBC. Yeah, we don't mind. It was LBC, my former employer. And he was then asked whether a siege that cut off power and cut off water was justified. And he repeated his line that is in a sort of robotic way that Israel had a right to defend itself. But he did go on, and this is important that it's been cut out of some clips on social media. He did go on to say everything needs to be done within international law. Now that I think was rather a wet response. I think what he should have said is that Israel should not cut off power and water to Gaza. And he's got into trouble as a consequence because he's basically said he was misunderstood. So he's, he's either backtracked or he's clarified what he said. He should have been clearer. And as, and as a consequence of him not being clearer or of him having to U-turn, if, if he was in fact meaning that in the first place, he's losing support within his own party. Do you agree with that? Well, I think very much so. He's the man who tries to please everybody. And as we know from the Aesop's fables, uh, the man who tries to please everybody ends up pleasing nobody. It's one of the many reasons why he seems to me to be obviously unfit for high office. Uh, but yes, it's, it's a mess for him, largely of his own creation. If he'd been clearer on what he, on what he intended, he wouldn't be in the mess. One of my close friends, actually, Shaister Aziz, who is a really good woman, She's Muslim. She wears a hijab. She has worked very, very hard for a Labour government. She's a moderate Labour person. And she's resigned in Oxford as a consequence of how she feels Starmer has handled this. She's someone who believes that killings on all sides are horrific. And she thinks that Starmer should have been quicker and clearer in his condemnation of some of the tactics or the strategies used by Israel. And I have sympathy for her on that. Well, Debbie, one of my viewers says, Michelle, we are horrified about how your panel is responding to Israel's uh, reaction to the massacre. You say it is Hamas that are putting their civilians at risk, not Israel. Uh, Debbie goes on to say Hamas have food and fuel that they could give to their civilians. Uh, in Debbie's view, she says Israel are doing the right thing and what we would want our government to do in this country if the same happened here. Trish says, uh, Michelle, you are right. Many of us uh, want Israel to act for those babies, for the innocent victims, she says, this cannot be let go. If you just sit and pause, the terrorists have, will have, think they've got the power to get and act again. They won't stop. They want to destroy Israel and is Israel must act and do whatever. Have none of these people even got the imagination to wonder to themselves what it must be like to be a wholly innocent, non-political person in Gaza under bombardment? Have they even been within, have they seen what, 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 a, what a building looks like Israel. after it's been bombed? But, but they're, they're, the viewers' points that I've just read out, they will say but Michelle, it Peter is and Hamas. I are, Peter and I are not denying that Hamas are evildoers. On I've the contrary. The medieval to describe Hamas. The question is, how do you, how do you defend Israel against this evil, point one? And point two, what are you prepared to do in the terms of killing innocent Palestinians, including children like our children, what, how many of those lives 
Are you prepared and to people, take? People have been using terms like eradication. Do they have any idea, any idea what they mean? Has nobody learned anything from the wars of the 20th century, the Vietnam War, where the United States dropped millions of tons of high explosive on Vietnam uh, to try and eradicate the, 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 the Viet Cong and destroy the, the Ho Chi Minh Trail? Not only did they fail completely to do that, but they killed huge numbers of innocent people and devastated a country to no good effect. They lost the war. This kind of warfare does not work. Those who do it are stupid. You know, I think one thing that unites us all is I think we all agree that this situation is just absolutely horrific.